Hello and welcome to The Boot Room. My name's Chris and this is an in-depth tactical analysis of all things Liverpool. Today we're going to be looking at Tottenham against Liverpool, what we can expect tactically, how Conte's improved the side and stay tuned for a really interesting analysis of how Conte's got Tottenham scoring goals. If we move forward, we can look at the recent games and see here how Conte's regularly getting a higher XG expected goals, creating better opportunities in more dangerous positions. Basically, he's got the front three firing, Mora, Son and Kane. Against Leeds and Norwich, however, they are still leaking opportunities. Norwich not having a very good attack, uh, to put it bluntly, uh, pun intended, and at the same time against Leeds also. So they're still leaking some opportunities, so they are a work in progress. Let's have a look at the comparison between both Conte and Nuno Espirito Santos. Here we can see the difference between the two. And if you can see, originally we had Nuno Espirito Santos's last games in charge. Really interesting here. You can see that the XG is considerably different. Why? Because they weren't finishing their chances. You can see that uh, Son, Kane and Mora are all below what you would expect for them. If we move this forward onto Conte's games, big difference. Only Harry Kane is underperforming. He's underperforming considerably. However, the rest is all green. And that's just a big difference between red and green. Huge difference. So how has he got that team ticking? We're going to have a look now at how he's done that and why they're really ticking. So please stay tuned. It's quite interesting. You'll like it. So with that being said, how are Conte's Tottenham performing at the moment and what can we expect tactically come Sunday? As we can see here, the front three are always together pair it together the attacker midfielders in those half spaces are trying to block the center of the pitch much like Gerard's Villa which is a really successful tactic and quite interesting using that movement together to try and rob the ball in the center of the pitch when they can it'd be interesting to see if Klopp plays a two against them uh two holder midfielders such as uh Thiago and Henderson or Milner for example and then at the same time when they have the ball looking for those vertical passes from the 10 for example from the centre back to the 10 uh, this is Son in this case or using Regalon as the out ball and as we can see here when Regalon goes Tongangi comes in sorry about the pronunciation Tongangi probably not great and what happens there is that they've always got a back four and they're always using that stability to build upon. It means that they're never really vulnerable and they're trying to reduce the amount of opportunities the opponent has. The front three using quick combinations and Mora and Son going beyond Kane. Going beyond him looking for those opportunities. If we move on from there and we have a look at some of their tactics and how they look during the game you can see here they're blocking the center of the pitch really trying to reduce those balls in between the lines and protecting those two central midfielders one win back forward and one full back at the same time so not two win backs and three in defense they don't quite trust the defense yet and Tengangi is more of a center back anyhow so they're really trying to go this way to the left rather than anything else and improved communication, incredibly important. Conte's actually got them talking, communicating and playing in unison, which is something perhaps Nuno Espirito Santos struggled with at least. In attack, it's a little different. Uh, they are playing with two attacking midfielders in between the lines. Really interesting because it means that as that's happening, the opposition have a decision whereby the centre-back has to press. And if he presses and he doesn't win the ball, we end up with quite an interesting situation because we have Mora in the half space. And if he wins that one-verse-one duel, problems for the opposition. 
whereby he can play a small one two um, sorry a short one two with the with son and then with those players closer together as we've seen in the animation they're always looking for those runs beyond and those combinations to try and get off a shot in central areas it's really really quite effective and impressive and the final but not least when you've got son mora and regular in your team quick transitions right from the off can they get the ball on the edge of the box when sitting deep and spring into that counter using uh, Kane as something of a pivot up front and running off him. I think, to be honest, they're going to find it difficult only playing two central midfielders uh, in Skip and Hoiberg. They're playing the same, the same team over and over and again. They've got problems with COVID the same as everybody else. But let's remember that they're not the most complete squad. So Liverpool to dominate, to attack down the wings, and let's see what happens. But I can I can see that Mo Salah might get in behind Regulon more than once. Uh, predict again the same as Villa. Quite a healthy score, but it just depends how long Tottenham can hold on and whether they can counter against Liverpool. I uh, I don't think so.